afternoon. I was waiting for the snow to start up again, hopefully waiting for another shower to blow through. I have not had luck with that. It's been snowing and raining and doing all kinds of nasty stuff all day. So we have a storm here in Kansas. A nice mid-February, no, it's late February, it's the 24th storm. So today I will be reviewing for you, if I can speak, reviewing for you Talisker Storm Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Today I don't have my daughter as a cameraman. She has decided to stay at her friend's house, so I'm doing this all on my own. I'll get started here. I've not let this set like I have others when I will start the videos because this is a non-age statement whiskey. <clears throat> It is 45.8% by volume. It is a Talisker, of course. Made by the sea. I'll read a little bit off the label. The distillery was established in 1830. They were a triple distillation. Expanded the distillery in 1900. Went to triple distillation in 19, till 1928, at which point they went back to double distillation. It was mothballed for a time period after the 40s. 1960 there was a fire they had to rebuild the stills some of the stills in 1962 to start over it's an interesting distillery the history on it's rather neat it's a, it's it's one that's i found interesting it was part of the clearances you either worked at the distillery or you left to go to the united states and dave brew mentions it that's where i get this from and reading is in his book and he talks about Tobermory and, and Talisker were the two distilleries where the option was given by the landowner. You either work at the distillery or you go to the United States for the local populace. Or the New World, maybe Australia, maybe New Zealand. I'm not sure. <clears throat> anyway, long and the short of it, Talisker's came a long way since then. I would like to try some tin, and someday I will get me a bottle of 10-year-old. I've got this on sale six months ago, probably. I believe, if I remember correctly, I paid just shy of $50 for it, like $47 or $48, but don't quote me on that. Anyway, I have the box that's over there, but there's nothing the box is really going to tell us that this doesn't tell us. So, without further ado, and this, I don't use water. I've had enough of it now, I don't use water. When I initially tasted this, I have a di had a different opinion than I do now. So, without further ado, it's a medium gold color. It doesn't mention anything about colorant or chill filtration. There's no mention on the bottom bottle at all about that. And I don't remember, I don't think it was mentioned in Dave's book either. Uh, so I'm not sure. It's owned by Diageo. It's a Diageo product. Or under the Diageo umbrella of products. So anyway, back to the whiskey. I'm still deviating again, guys. Rabbit. Huh? If you know what I'm talking about, you'll think it's funny. Anyway, it's a medium, oily. It's not overly oily. But it gives a good, complete coating on the nose. I've got my original notes in here from the first and the second time I tried it because this took some warming up too. Again, smoke, you can smell a little bit of the smoke in the peat, salt, pepper. There's a little vanilla in the background. There's a citrus note. I think orange zest. 
orange zest. That's what I think of for the citrus note. A certain meaty texture, smell to it. Maybe ham. Okay, let's hit the palate with it and see what we get. Yeah, I'll go with ham. That's what I have in my notes, too. And the ham is a noted from the second time. I did not note it on the first time when I first opened the bottle. Like a smoked ham. But the peat and the smoke are there. It's more of a peaty smoke, but there's that sort of certain savory, meaty savory character to it. Salt. Pepper. Again, orange zest there. The smoke is more of a phenolic taste to it. It's not as heavy as some of the Islas on the phenolic end of things. But it's still there. Bay leaf. I get just a little bit of bay leaf with it too. Finishes long, consistent, thorough, slightly spirit driven, but at 45.8%. Not too much so, not too much so. You can get by without water with this one here, not a problem. Uh, It's good stuff. It, it's, it's, it's good stuff in its own right. When I first tried this, I didn't care for it. I'll be honest with you. I didn't get none of this on the start. When the, the I first cracked this bottle, I was like, what have I bought? I mean, I just thought, well, we'll drink it, get it over with, get it done with. But I was slow about drinking it. And after about three months... I come back to it and it had changed it had lightened up after about a quarter of the bottle was gone it started lightening up and the flavor started becoming more pronounced I put water in it water did not affect this flavor wise so that's why I didn't add water today uh, water didn't to me take it one way or the other it's just fine like this without water Talisker's an interesting, it's an interesting dram. I want to try the tin because I think the tin will probably give us a little more than this. And it does taste a little young. It does. But I like a young whiskey. I don't have no problems drinking young whiskeys. I like a little of the spirit behind it. I like that sort of raw flavor taste. I mean, have I drank any 20-year-old pluses? No, at this point I have not. I've drank... 17s. I drank 118. I've had, you know, 16s, 15s, blah, blah, blah. But I haven't had anything over 20. I do, the Glen Farkless 21 is on my radar. I, I know where I can get one and I want to get one because I like the Glen Farkless 12. But I don't have that experience with the older whiskeys. So we'll just stick with that. I'm digressing here. Uh, I'm going to give it an 83 out of 100. I'm going to stick with my initial score. The score doesn't change because I altered the score once. The original score was much less, but after the three-month period, and now we're about four and a half, five months into it, 
Uh, the score, I will leave that as 83. After about three months, it's a solid 83 out of 100, which is a solid whiskey. There's nothing wrong with it. It's worth, it's drinkable. It's enjoyable within its own right. But you want to let this, you want to let this breathe a little bit. This is one that's, that uh, takes some time. Uh, if you can find it on sale like I did, I would get a bottle and try it. If you haven't, you can get your better idea and a better opinion of what I'm what I, my palate is telling me and see how that relates to your palate. Anyway, <clears throat> that being said, I got a new gift today, bought myself anyway, and it came in the mail just today. Michael Jackson's Complete Guide to Single Malt Scotch. It's a fully revised 7th edition. So I look forward to perusing this and getting to know it. It looks like it'll be an interesting book. I have several books in the mail I've decided to purchase because I really like what I'm doing. As far as this tasting, it's really, I really enjoy this. So, it will go right alongside of Dave Broom on my shelf for my whiskeys. I've got a tequila book over there and a cocktail book and all kinds of motorcycle books. Anyway, I will sign off here. This is Robert. I'm your host. And y'all have a good day. And be warmer than I am right now because it got cold. That's it. Mm -hmm.